So, I have a bad habit of going for just real everything. So say I wanted to make something that looks like leather armor. I just, I make leather armor. That's what I do. But I have gotten a lot of requests for doing more like foam stuff because that other stuff is honestly kind of expensive, requires certain tools to work with, whereas in foam, you can make something that looks amazing for pretty cheap. So that is why, dear viewer, I've decided to make some foam armor. Specifically today, I'm gonna be making some bracers. And as usual, my experience here is very limited, so we're learning this thing together. So without much further ado, let's just jump into this and level up this skill. Now for this project, I picked up EVA foam, specifically four millimeter and two millimeter. The body of it all is gonna be made out of the four millimeter and I'm gonna add some detail over the top with the two. And I know they're in different colors. It's all they, it's all they had after Halloween. It crushes my insides, even though it shouldn't. I'm gonna paint it anyways, but still. Continuity, damn it. But before I start playing with the foam, I've gotta actually measure out what I need on my arm. I'm gonna start by wrapping my arm up with the saran wrap. And once I have that all wrapped up where I want it, I start layering on some masking tape to add some structure to it. Now, I've always found things like this better to do in small little strips of tape like this rather than trying to wrap it around your arm because when you do it that way, it tends to take like a funny shape and become like wavy and everything when you try to lay it back down afterwards. Now, once I'm happy with my coverage, all I have to do is draw a straight line down the center at the bottom and carefully cut it out with some scissors. Make sure you use scissors with a blunted tip so you don't cut yourself. And there you have it, a template. Unless you have a really unbalanced workout plan or you're just like a lonely, lonely dude, um, it should fit both of your forearms just the same. So you don't have to do it for both different arms. Do give it a test though, just in case. Now, once I have my pattern, I like to transfer it onto some chipboard so it's a little bit more stable to work with and I can save it for other projects. And the only real issue with this is you're taking that three-dimensional shape and turning it into a two-dimensional shape, which sometimes doesn't transfer very cleanly and you're gonna get your lines looking real wonky. But to fix this, I just think of this as like the basic shape to give me my measurements and roughly how it's gonna look. And then I go back in with rulers to clean up my lines. Also this larger arc here down at the bottom to make that look nice and clean. I just take a bit of string and tie it around a pencil like so. Then I can use it as a compass to help make that arc nice and smooth. So without looking right, I go back in with my scissors and cut out my template. This is gonna leave us with a nice strong template we can use for other projects later on. Just don't forget to mark it so you remember what it is. All right, so with our template in hand, it's time to actually start cutting out the foam. Now again, for the body of this, I'm gonna be using this four ounce EVA foam. Even though I do have this template to work off of, I like to cut it just a little bit larger than I think I'll need it so I can test it on me before I commit to the design. To do this, I just use my ruler to come out about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Then I use a nice sharp craft knife to free everything from the material. You're really gonna wanna make sure it is a new blade or a very sharp knife to get your best cuts. And with that, I have my shape cut out to test on me and this is a really good example of why I like to make them a little bit bigger than my template is telling me. So depending on the material you're working with, the thickness is gonna come into play while it's trying to wrap around you. So if you look at this here, even with that just eighth of an inch, it's barely making contact around the opposite side. And that's with me trying to push it really tight, which I don't want this. I kind of like there to be a little bit of a gap underneath it so you can see whatever like bracing or stitch work or whatever holds it all together. But had I just gone with whatever my template was, it would have been a little bit too small. So yeah, definitely size up. You can always take a little bit of material away. You can't necessarily add any back. So happy with that, I just duplicated this to have my two bracers ready to go. All right, cool. So now that we have the actual body of our bracers built out of the four millimeter foam, I'm gonna move on to this two millimeter foam to add the details to it. Now for said details, I have this design that Middle Miss Red made for me. I simply scaled it to the right size to fit this in Photoshop and then printed it out. To cut this out of my foam, I'm just gonna go ahead and tape this template right onto it and then cut all the pieces out with a sharp X-Acto knife. And I actually found it easier to more kind of lightly score everything than try to cut through on the first pass. Then I can just remove the paper and clean everything up, making sure my lines were perfect. So I think I'm gonna make this bottom part kind of look like, like a black or brown leather, and then this top is gonna look like metal that's been adhered to it. Which means we're gonna move on to actually like adding a texture to this and shaping it. And to do this, I'm just gonna use a heat gun. See, when heated up, this stuff becomes actually really malleable, so you can like put indentations in it, you can shape it and hold it until it cools, and then it'll stay in that shape. Just make sure to apply your heat evenly and don't linger too long so you don't burn your foam. 
I also found out this really cool trick to do a tin foil. By crumpling this up and using it as kind of a stamp into the hot foam, it leaves behind that same kind of texture that you see on leather. By doing this, I'm able to fake out my foam to look more like leather. Also, while it's heated up, I roll it into this tube shape here so that it'll hold on in the bracer shape I need for it to stay on my arm. I'm also gonna hit my detail pieces here with the heat gun for two reasons. One, because my cuts aren't perfect and there are these little like fuzzy pieces that are hanging off the edges here. When I hit it with a heat gun, that fuzziness kind of melts away and the edges become much more clean. And reason the second is the fact that I'm gonna paint these things and in order for the paint to stay on the surface and not just suck in, you have to hit it with heat to kind of melt the surface a little bit and fill in all those little pores. Now I could have stuck this on here first to do that, but actually I realized that when you reheat these things, the detail you put into it straight up disappears. So like the leather texturing I just put in here would be gone if I reheated it again. And sure, I could just put it back in, but I'm, I'm lazy. I like it how it is. <laughs> All right, so to stick these two pieces together, I'm gonna be using barge contact cement. First, I lay my detail into place and then trace out where it will actually lie onto the bracer. This way, I know all the areas that need the cement. Once I have the cement on the bracer, I also add some to the back of the detail. After leaving them alone for about 10 minutes to become tacky, I carefully position the detail onto the bracer. You do wanna go really slowly with this because it is a contact adhesive. It bonds on contact and there is no repositioning it if you get it wrong. And also, I've said this before, but make sure when you're using contact cement that you're doing it in a place with good ventilation. I have like a little vent hood above me here and stuff. So yeah, this stuff can be quite toxic. Make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. But check these out. These are looking so cool. I'm really excited about these. I can kind of envision it now. You got like that, that leather coloring and the metal. Ah, looks great. Now, just like leather though, we're gonna wanna go ahead and round off these edges to make it look a little bit more clean. To do that, I'm just gonna use my Dremel and sand off the sharp edges. While using the Dremel, notice how I keep moving it in the same direction that the Dremel is turning. As you can see on this test piece, as long as I go in that direction, I'm fine. But as soon as I go backwards, it digs into the piece and mars it up pretty bad. So I just take it nice and slow and go along my edges at kind of a medium setting, just taking down the sharpness. Doing this gives me this nice smooth rounded edge that looks way more clean. And then once I'm happy with that overall shape, I hit it with the heat gun just to get rid of any of the fraying or the fuzziness that's left on the edges from the sanding. Finally, before we get into like painting it, I wanna put in some straps here to make sure it actually closes around my arm. To make my straps, I cut some of these one inch wide strips to a size that I think would look good on the bracer. Then I cut them into the same kind of shape that I would normally with my leather strapping. And then just like before, I used my Dremel to round off the edges and then heated everything up and added some texture with my tin foil. Using this method, I made four of them, short ones for the front and longer ones for the back. To further increase the realism, I use this fork lace punch that I usually use for leather just to mark out where I want stitch holes to go. Then to make them more permanent, I just punch them through with this needle. Then again, I just use a little bit of contact adhesive to put everything together. And you know what, color me impressed. This is looking, look at this. This looks like a little leather gauntlet, right? The texture and the, the little holes on it. It's kind of cool because the same principles that you use when you're working with leather actually do kind of work while you're working with the foam. So that's neat. Now I wanted to add one more little detail by making little rivets that's actually locking this metal detail into place. Now I've read a bunch of different ways to do this online from using like hot glue to the heads of tacks that you kind of glue into place. But I just so happen to have these little foam spots here that I think will work perfectly. They're just these domed little pieces of foam with a sticky side to them. And as you can see by just kind of sticking them into place. I now have these little kind of like rivets there holding everything together. I think once it's painted and everything, uh, that'll look kind of cool actually. Speaking of painted, I think it's time we start doing that. Before painting though, I gotta prime with some Plasti Dip. This is just gonna give us a nice coating to paint on that's flexible enough to move and bend without cracking. Make sure you either do this outside though or do it like I'm doing it here in a little ventilation box. Cause this stuff smells really strong. You will regret not having good ventilation. Now I did three coats of these and look at how good this came out. The finish is super clean and it can bend and flex without leaving any cracks or wrinkles. All right, so with these looking super slick, uh, it's time for me to actually add some color. Now to do this, I'm just gonna be using the super basic set of acrylic paints, as well as like a silver metallic for the metal part here. My aim is to make this bit look like, like a dark brown leather and then metal on top of it. I'm starting with just a basic brown and keeping it pretty light so I don't take away any of that leather texture that I made. I also don't mind a little bit of that black coming through because I want it to have kind of a dirty used look. 
With those pretty well colored with my basic brown, I then go back in and start dry brushing with a golden brown just to add some extra layer and contrast. By making sure my brush is really dry when I do this, only the high areas get any of that lighter color. To add even more depth, I do a black wash, which is just black paint mixed with water. This darker color settles into all the little nooks and crannies and makes the whole piece a little bit more cohesive and dynamic looking. Like, look at the immediate difference from this side to this side here. This side doesn't have the black wash on it, and this side does. I am genuinely impressed with how much this looks like leather. And I work with leather a lot. All those different layers of paint really adds this kind of cool marbling effect and mimics kind of the inconsistencies you find in leather. All right, so with that looking slick, let's move on to painting this whole kind of metal area here. For this, I have this silver metallic paint that I'm just gonna go ahead and brush on. And I actually find that just one coat of this lets some of the black show through and really adds a cool aged look to it. Okay, yeah, I officially get the appeal of foam. Look at how dope that is! That straight up looks like metal and leather. That came out really good. And not just like metal, but like worn metal. Like it's been through some battles already. I love this thing. Okay, so from here, I just want to add some hardware stuff to make it a little more realistic, starting with some thread in the holes that I made here. To do this, I'm just using the same wax thread that I use for leather, along with a leather needle. And for this, I just use a saddle stitch like I would with regular leather. Though I wish leather was this easy to sew. And that stitching added just a whole different level of realism to this. Like it already was looking a lot like leather, but for some reason when I see like a saddle stitch in there, my head just goes like, yeah, that's leather. Convincing, I'm happy with that. Okay, so at this point, I need a way to actually keep it on my arm. Originally, I was just gonna kind of put like a faux button on here and then hold everything together with an elastic banding. But honestly, I have some Velcro and I think I can just make it so that these straps actually just kind of strap on with some Velcro. So to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut some of this Velcro into the shape of the end of these straps. Then glue them into place with some contact cement. Then I'll just use the end of that strap to mark where the next piece of Velcro has to go on the opposite side. And BAM! Check these out! These came out really good. Like, the leather part of it looks like leather. That stitching added so much to it. And the metal has a nice shine to I'm, I'm happy with these. Check that out. Now next time I might try putting like an actual like strap with a buckle on this so they're a little bit more adjustable. Just because I think if I were to wear something underneath this, it might be a little too tight. But as it stands right now, they fit me perfectly. I'm super happy with these. Now I hope you enjoyed this episode and my foray into foam crafting. If you did, please leave me some of that like it love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. Also, a huge thank you to my newest high tier Patreon members. You guys have been crazy busy. I have a bunch of you this week. So, special thank you to Zek Torres, Jeremy Vinton, Casey Gonzalez, Stephen Brewer, and Amanda Wohan? Wohan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Wohan. You guys rock. It's because of people like you and these people over here that I'm able to do this and we're able to continue to grow this show. Seriously, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate you. Also, thank you to you for just watching this show. If there's anything you'd like to see me cover, why don't you leave it down in the comment section and I will add it to the list. All right, I gotta get going. This whole foam crafting has opened up a whole new world of armor for me. In the meantime, though, keep leveling up, you. Thank you for making it to the end credits here. YouTube loves when you make it to the end credits, and they also love when you click on other videos like, like this one down here. You may have loved the foam crafting, but I guarantee you're gonna learn something just as interesting if you click on one of those videos. In fact, if you click on the subscribe button down there, Maybe you won't miss any of the videos. Just saying. But check the- Nope. These look fancy.